Okay, so let's come back to the tiger now and talk about how I'm going to add an IK arm to this tiger. So as I said at the beginning of the tutorial, the way I've got my arms at the moment, they've been drawn in false perspective. So they're not going to be of any use here. And the paws aren't much better really. They would need to be drawn from the side. So I'll hide those as well. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to create a new grease pencil object and I'll call that arm. And all this arm is going to be is a straight line like that. And I'll just do it to there and press enter. Now I'm going to come into edit mode and just have a look at how many points are on this line. Quite a few, but I don't really need all of those. I simply need a shoulder and I'll say there, that can be the wrist. A shoulder, a wrist and the end of my hand and of course the elbow which can be there. So I'll delete this, this, this and this. Delete, dissolve. That got rid of all the points except these ones. Excellent. Now I think I'll just say that the elbow is going to be there and I'll just say that his wrist can be there. Excellent. Now let's make a bit more of this because it's very, very small at the moment. I'll come into the sculpt mode and I'll use the thickness tool to thicken this line up a bit. A much better way to thicken up a line is to go into edit mode, hold alt and press S and then you can move your mouse around to thicken or thin the line. If you're starting with no line at all like this and you hold alt and press S it's going to take a really long time to thicken that up because it's starting at such a thin point. So just hold alt press S and then type in 1000 and that should give this line enough thickness to show up. Press enter and then hold alt and press S a second time and you'll be starting from a much thicker point. I could also thicken this line up by coming to the object data properties and coming to the adjustments menu underneath layers and in there I can make a couple of temporary adjustments such as a color change so I'll just make it the same orange as the body and I can turn the factor up like that. Now this particular stroke has semi opacity on it because when I drew it I didn't have the opacity turned up so I'll just click on strength and increase the opacity on that so that it's as bright as it should be. And I'll use the stroke thickness to take it up to 100 and then I'll do the rest using the thickness brush that I can find here in the uh, stroke menu. Right, that took a little while but <laughs> we're there. So now that I can see it like this I think I'll just make things a bit smaller and move things around a touch. So first of all the end of this I think I'll, I, I'm okay with it being there actually. I'll take the the um, elbow and just put it there and then I'll bring the wrist in a bit like that and we'll just uh, we'll just settle on something like that. I think I'll take these two points and scale them on the y-axis just so they're flat and that can be my IK arm. If I want to I think I'll come to draw mode and I think I'll use the tint brush to color this in, make the paw white and make the rest of it match the body. So I'll just use this here and color drop the stomach but as you can see it's not going to have any effect. That's because when I was in edit mode it came over here and added the tint factor. I made it orange. So the tint color will override any of the vertex paint colors. So just turn that back off again and you can see where I've been painting now. So I'll go back to the draw mode. Or I could go to vertex paint actually, they're both the same thing. And again, I'll just take this color and I'm already quite happy with the color of that, but I want this to be the color of his orange fur. So this is where the dropper, the eyedropper tool, the color dropper tool doesn't really give you a true representation of what you're trying to, what you're trying to color, of the color you're trying to drop. This is the best orange I'm going to be able to get by using this eyedropper tool. So this little issue that I'm running into on the tutorial is simply down to your render settings. So just to recap, if you have a red color like this and you're in the vertex paint mode, and you decide to use the color dropper tool to match that red and color it in exactly, what you'll find is that's actually 
not the same red it's darker or lighter or just different in some way and it'll leave you baffled because it's only slightly out but it's enough to notice and it's all down to the render properties if you come to the render properties scroll down to the bottom you'll see color management and often blender will by default open you up in the view transform filmic so switch that to standard make sure your display device is just on standard rgb and then you use the color dropper tool like this you'll get an accurate representation of the color that you've just dropped so the actual way to get this true value is to click on the body come to the materials find the orange that I've used for the body come to the fill and look for the hex code there it is I'll take a copy of that I'll come back to the vertex paint and under here I'll just type in the hex code or paste it in this case and hit enter now I've got the exact orange that I was using there and I will use it to color in the arm of course I'm on the wrong object so let's try that again now we'll use it to color in the arm there we are and that'll do right his arm is cutting slightly through his head so I'm gonna move this back just enough so that it's not cutting through and to do that I'll press G and rather than moving up or down I'm gonna press Y and move in the Y direction there we are and just to see how that looks from here it just went backwards Excellent. Right, I'm ready to rig.